Greetings and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Lokita Maka. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe. Take that moment, click that notification bell and stay updated. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back, welcome back. Thank you so much guys. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. As I always say, this is a space for us to learn so once again i am back with the last segment that i promised you question for animal reproduction and i don't want to waste any time this time around don't want to waste any time already it's exam time i'm sure most of you will be looking for this part so this is the third part and the final part for paper one and let's get uh, straight to it let's uh, just start so question one 4.1 you actually have two diagrams there um, that show female and male reproductive organs and then the first question that you are asked there is to label b c and g so you're just gonna look where is b where is c where is g and if you take a closer look at those diagrams the first one um, mm -hmm. clearly that is um, a male reproductive system because we can see testes there and the second one because we can see ovaries then that means that is the female reproductive organ so now we're gonna label so B as you can see there is that tube there that connects um, to the testes or from the testes and what do we call that we call that vas deferens or it's what we call a sperm duct so this is the tube that basically carries the sperm from the epididymis to the ej ejaculatory duct and then label c where you see it's just above the testes and that is the epididymis so this is the coiled tube where sperm matures and this is where the sperm is stored then we look at g so g is on the next diagram or oh, and now if you look closely to that um that is the cervix so this is the lower part of the uterus which actually opens up into the vagina and serves as the passage for sperm as well as menstrual fluid so now here's the thing <coughs> here as much as i'm explaining this you are not asked to explain anything just label so b it's a vast difference or spam duct c epididymis d m g cervix that's it then you get your three marks now identify a letter from a to i of the part of the diagram one and diagram two where each of the following occurs right the site where spermatogenesis occurs. So that site is D. So you have identified the spermatogenesis occurs in the testes. So that's, that is where it occurs. And testes there are labeled D. Serves as the function of, impl of implantation. And the answer there is E, only E, which is the uterus, right? And then the site where fertilization occurs. Where does fertilization in this case occurs? It's I in the oviduct. D secretes a sticky liquid that provides energy to the sperm cells. And where is that? That happens in A in the seminal vesicles. Now let's continue. Now we have a beautiful picture there of a cow and a bull um, doing whatever they are doing and they are actually that is what we call a reproductive system or reproductive process i mean forgive me for that um mistake now here's what you can you can see already the, that um, the bull is trying to mount over that cow and um, that's how actually that that is part of the reproductive um, process now identify the reproductive process represented in the picture above so what is happening there so this process this reproductive process the cow is trying to mate or they are mating this is mating or copulation now this also involves um, 
the bull mounting the cow, right? Whatever correct term it is. Then, um, indicate the actual stage of the process in question 4.2. Point one. So that process is um, mounting. So this process is referred to as mounting. And then we continue. Um, state two sexual behavioral signs which are displayed by bulls before mounting. So what do bulls show before they mate? right so they might follow the cows sometimes they will excitedly approach the cows um, that are actually in ustras they will see um, and the other thing that they can do is to actually start sniffing or licking the external um, genitalia or the urine of the cow that um, is on heat or that is in ustras so those are the two um, you can think of some, but those are the major ones. Um, state two factors that regulate the action in bulls during the process identified in question 4.2.1. Two factors that regulate mating. Because we have said that um, we have said that process, the actual state, the process is mating, right? So now remember, they just said that regulate the action because they can't give you the answer. They can't give you the answer. So now, what regulate? One, it's genetics. Um, so certain breeds may have different or certain mating behavior and also hormonal influences. Um, sometimes the testosterone of a bull can affect like its libido and also the mating behavior. Now let's continue. We have a schematic diagram there which illustrates um, the processes of reproductive techniques in animals, in farm animals, right? Identify the type of the reproductive technique illustrated by A and B um, above. So now, okay. It's the reproductive technique. We have nucleus containing the DNA, which is taken from a donor to and transferred into an um, a nucleated egg, leading to fusion. Right. Then we have blastocyst is implanted into the uterus of a recipient sheep, and then we have embryo embryonic um, stem cells are extracted from the blastocyst, right? So identify the type of reproductive technique they done there. So in A, so there's implanta implantation was. So a blastocyst is implanted into the uterus of a recipient. So that sheep there is a receiver. So this is cloning. This is a reproductive cloning. It's basically to aimed to produce a live of offspring. Then now with B, that is the therapeutic cloning. This is focused on the stem cells for treatment, right? Then, then indicate the purpose of each type of the reproductive technique that you have given above. So A, this, as I have mentioned, so this is basically to produce an offspring that is genetically identical to the donor, right? And then B, this is to produce stem cells that can be used for health purposes such as um, cell therapy.
Then state two disadvantages of the reproductive technique illustrated in the representation above. So one of the reasons is that it's very expensive, um, so the process itself may require significant resources. And then um, sometimes the cloned animals can age prematurely. So there may be health issues and maybe higher incidence of abnormalities. So those are the disadvantages. Then we continue to look at question 4.4. You are given two diagrams there, diagram A and diagram B. So identify the processes represented in diagram 1 and diagram 2. So Diagram one, we can see that we have a germ cell, spermatocyte, um, spermatids. So already that gives you an idea. This particular diagram is a spermatogenesis. So this is the production of the sperms. And then diagram two is the oogenesis. This is the production of the ova or the production of eggs, right? Label um, A, B, and C. So so you have a primary spermatocyte and in the process the primary spermatocyte is followed by the secondary spermatocyte so a there is, is is the secondary spermatocyte now this mm -hmm. is the stage this is one of the stages in the sperm development and b those are the sperm cells those are the mature sperm or spermatozoa um, then C, so C is on the other side, so already you are given a clue there, below that one that is the prime, the secondary O side, so that means the f number C, which is above that, that is primary O side. So these are easy marks that you can get because you are given a clue already, for example the diagram one, you have primary spermatocyte, then it splits into two, then it means that is the secondary spermatocyte, right? Is max the remax done? Name the type of cell division which resulted in C. So the type of cell division there is mitosis. So this occurs during the early stages of um, gamete formation, right? Then we continue to 4.5. It is important for a farmer to observe the cow prior during and after parturition because this process can negatively affect can be negatively affected by many factors so give the term that refers to to birth difficulty in cows and what is that term that term is uh, referred to as dystocia, right? State two problems associated with the fetus that may interfere with the normal parturition process, right? So some of the problems can be, let's say, um, a large fetus, let's say this cow or the fetus is just generally like high birth weight, um, so they can make it. They can make the delivery very difficult. So this is also similar with females or humans. If the baby or the, the fetus is quite um, large, then it becomes difficult for a natural birth, and other um, ways of doing it have to be done and. Luckily, with, with, with humans, we have C-section. And then another factor that, that may cause a problem is basically incorrect um, presentation, such as a bridge uh, position. So these can lead actually to complications. Now let's look at the last one, state two factors that may cause retention of the placenta. So factors that may cause a retention of the placenta. One is deficiency of vitamin A, 
Um, so it can actually affect the expulsion of the placenta and also infections that are in the uterus. So these can actually hinder the normal contractions which are needed to deliver the placenta. <coughs> Now, um, let's look at the diagram below 4.6. 4.6, so this diagram represents the udder of the cow. Now, identify parts A and parts B. So, part A is alveoli or what we call a lobo so this is where the milk is produced and b is the gland cavity now this is where milk um, collects before being expelled right then indicate the letter that um, represents the part where milk is produced so that part is a which is the alveoli and then the last and final question um, name the hormone that is responsible for each of the following function the synthesis of milk which hormone is is responsible for that and we call that hormone a prolactin um, a hormone that is responsible for letting milk milk let down process and we call that oxytocin say that with me oxytocin anyway uh guys thank you so much we have now reached the end of our paper one revision 2023 i hope you found this information useful i hope you found it insightful remember i'm here to help i have made a disclaimer i don't teach in high school anymore and now i do this on the side just to assist you because of my love for teaching so please bear with me please um take it easy on me i understand i have promised to deliver i'm going to continue to deliver because i am here to help you so please continue engaging with me drop the comments down don't hesitate to ask questions and yeah all the best good luck with your studies stay focused as you prepare for your exams i wish i hope Actually, I hope to come back with part two, with paper two, uh, very soon, very soon. But just indicate when you are writing your paper two so that I'll try to make it, to split it into just two parts instead of three parts. But obviously, we you know, the first question actually takes a little bit of time. So I don't want you to be exhausted while you are listening to this. Otherwise, love and light. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Till next time.